Hello, welcome back. An image is as good as the story it tells. This is a very old saying in photography and is a good one. But sometimes you need more than one image to show to showcase the evolution of something to tell a story. And this is where you may want to do collage, photo collage. And uh, in this video, I will show you how you can create one of those in Photoshop for your astrophotography. But what's the reason to do photo collage with astrophotography? So let's see some example. Here I wanted to show all my astrophotography taken from the city in Brussels. Another reason to do collage is if you want to display how your skill evolved in time and how the changing in equipment affect your astrophotography. This is the case for me with the North American and Pelican Nebula. The first contact I had with this type of target was back in 2015 when I started with astrophotography. I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't have specialized gear, I just took my camera, pointed at the zenith, take a series of images and then at home I saw that I got something there. And finally in 2021 I was able to build my uh, ultimate setup and uh, I use a small refractor now and an astro camera. I use dual band filters and this is the type of image I got at the end. So this sh nicely show my evolution in skills and uh, gear. But there is another type of time evolution and that is with uh, astronomical phenomenon like the partial solar eclipse we witnessed in Brussels a few weeks ago. So the idea here was to show the image for the maximum of the eclipse surrounded by the timeline of the unfolding eclipse from beginning to the end. And I decided to do that in eight different images that are um, in a circular path around the image representing the maximum of the eclipse that is large and is at the center of the frame. The same concept more or less applies here where we have the timeline around the totality for the total lunar eclipse of 2019. You can use a circular collage to show the evolution of the moon phases throughout the lunar cycle or you can create triptych for nice picture to hang on the wall like the one that is behind me. So there, are, there is plenty of reason to do photo collage with astrophotography images and uh, one way to create the collage is to use Photoshop. So the idea now, what, we are, what I wanted to show you is how you can create first a template that then you can use and reuse all over again for different type of images. Uh, for this, we create a new document and I want to take something that is long and narrow. So I can use, I can create a document 3000 pixel width in wide, 1000 pixel high, and because I may want to print it, I want to use a high resolution of 300 pixels per inch and I use a 16-bit RGB color to display my color. I also use a white background or you can use a gray or red, doesn't matter, let's do red. Okay, this shockingly red document is our workspace and now we want to create the tree image. What we could do is to take the photos, drag it in and then move them around, save as the image and we have our triptych. The problem is that this way we don't have a template that we can use for other kind of images. So because we want to create a template, we will use shapes. We will draw shapes that then we will use to mask the different uh, images. So let's use for this case the rectangular tool. With the rectangular tool selected, we just click somewhere on the document and we make pop up this create rectangle window because the my moon shots are often square we can create a, a, a square 800 by 800 pixel in this window you can also tell if you want to have round edges for your shape or not in my case i don't care and if you want to the center of the shape to be where you have clicked or if you want to have um, a corner there. Again, we don't care, we can use whatever. Now the shape is a bit off from the document, so we use the move tool and we move it somewhere in the document, doesn't matter where exactly. 
Now, every shape we create goes in its own layer. Now we want to do a triptych and so we need to have three shapes. If we click again on the document with the rectangle tool selected, then we create a, we can create a shape that is exactly as the, la the last one we created. So we click once to create the second shape, we click a third time to create the third shape. Now you see that every shape has in the info window has these properties. We can choose uh, the filling, the color of the filling and the size, style and color of the stroke. I don't want the stroke to be white, I want it to be black. So actually we can remove it altogether. Okay, now we have three rectangles that are black with no border. Now we want to equally space them in the document. For this we start placing the middle shape. So you see that when I drag in the shape around with the move tool, you have this pink annotation on screen. So the lines tell you if things are aligned and to what. Now let's move a bit things around. Now I want to align the center shape to be in the middle of the document. Doing so, you see I have this vertical and horizontal line that cross at the middle of my shape. So the shape is center and I leave it there. Then I take the leftmost shape, I start to drag it into the document and you see that now is aligned to the, um, to the center shape. So we leave it there. Now when we drag the rightmost shape, we want it aligned to the other two and we want it also equally spaced. So now it's aligned but it's not equally spaced, so I move the shape to the left, to the left and now suddenly you see that we have the indication of the spacing. The spacing is 236 pixel either side of the central shape. So we leave it there. This is our layout. It's a very simple one and we will see later some more uh, complex layout. Okay, now we have the layout. This we can reuse it, we can save it like that with save as and save on our computer and we can use it with whatever kind of images we want. Here I want to create a triptych of the moon like the one you see below. So I have here three moons. I have this one, I have this one and I have a full moon. Uh, you see they have kind of different styles, vot watermark, uh, I don't care because we will use the shape that we just draw on our document on the, lay on the layout to mask out part of the original image of the moon. So let's start now to drag the images in. It is easy, particular with complicated layout, if before you drag in an image you select in the stack of the layer, the layer where uh, your shape, the shape you will use to mask the image is. Now you can use the move tool, you just click on the shape of interest, for my case is the middle one. Now you see that its layer has been selected. I can then drag in the image that will go in the middle, that is this one. And you see that now the layer of the image containing the image is sitting on top the layer containing the shape I want to use to mask my moon. And then we confirm the placement, we go to layer and we create a clipping mask. Now you see the shape has become a mask for my image. The layer containing the image is selected so I can use the free transformation tool and then I can drag, well I can resize and drag my moon around. Let's do this, something like so and we confirm. Now for the triptych we want to make sure that all the moons in the different images have the same size. To help us we go view, show, grid. Now a grid is shown in our document and we can clearly see how, well, where the moon, uh, what is the size of the moon in terms of this grid. So let's now go with the, to select the leftmost shape and now we are going to drag in the full moon. 
Now the full moon is there. Let's move it a bit on the shape. Again, we go, we confirm the placement and then we go layer, create clipping mask. And now we use the free transformation tool to resize and to move our moon around. And we look at the grid and we try to have the moon having the same size in all the images, something like so. And then we confirm. Ah, maybe I can move it a bit more on the center of the shape, like so, and use the arrow key to place it a bit better in the center, like so. Finally, let's select the rightmost shape and we drag in the last image, that is this one. Let's start with removing the red. So we select the background and then with the, we select the black color and we use the paint bucket tool. We click on the background and now the background is black. Okay, so one thing we can do now is to create a snapshot of the image rather than flatten the image. So in on the Mac, this is done by by using the command option alt e now that we have this snapshot ready we start to use the brush tool with the black color and we remove this watermark here and we make a bit smaller the paint the, the, we make a bit smaller the brush and we start painting over this line here and now that's the triptych complete. So when you are happy, uh, you can simply file, export, export as JPEG. Great, we want to print it maybe, so we leave it like so. We embed the color profile, we export, and uh, yes, save it like this. And we can go to see. And that is our triptych. Now this is a lot of work to do it just for pasting three images one next to the other. But the good deal of Photoshop is that you can use, uh, you can create more complicated uh, layout. For instance, this layout here. This is the layout I use for um, creating this, the time evolution of the solar eclipse. Or you can once you, if you like the image that I showed before, uh, with all my astrophotography from the city, that's the layout. And now it's simply I need to what I need to do is drag in the images inside and mask it with the proper shape. I hope you enjoyed this video about uh, creating templates for your astrophotography collage. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.